Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? If you click on this video, you are curious about the state of the Elder Scrolls Online 2023 post Necron patch, you know, with the Arcanist. Oh, one second here, let me... There we go. Now we don't have this problem anymore. Uninstall complete. All right, good deal. Now we can actually get into the actual video itself. Um, we have a lot to talk about. So, um, if you guys do not know me, hi, I'm Horcrux, Crux, Josh, whatever you want to call me. You know, whatever, within reason, right? Um, I've played ESO since beta, uh, literally beta. Uh, I started out on PC. I had a really crap PC at the time. I swapped over to console. I played way back, you know, when there's veteran rings, V14 rings. I've had a lot of experience in ESO, and here, as of late, the past couple of years, I've actually started making a channel and producing content for the, the game I love, The Elder Scrolls Online. And... What has been a really fun ride, um, the identity of the Elder Scrolls Online has changed vastly over the amount of years that I have played this. ESO started out being the PvP MMO. This is where all the PvP people will come and this, this is what the game was portrayed as and what it was sold as and they delivered. It was the best experience I've ever had in any game that I have ever played to this date. And I'm very nostalgic. I'm very grateful for those memories that I've had in the past. And it was such a phenomenal time. I cannot reiterate what a good game it was. Now, we are going to, I'm not going to explain the timeline to you guys, but um, we will fast forward to now. I'm not going to explain the term events. Right now, the state of ESO is the worst it has ever been. It is not a dying game. It is a dead game. The PvP community has been completely abandoned. Actually, ESO, the community, has been abandoned in general. I will touch on that in just a moment. And you should feel very offended about where the game is now compared to what it used to be and what the promises was thereof or where this game would be in the next decade from launch. So, there is no PvP in this game anymore. There is, but it has not gotten any love in four, five years. It is so bad that when you go into the community live streams, um, you know, showing off the new chapters and, and the new bells and whistles, you were actually banned for saying anything PvP related. Yes, you're banned from their chat for saying anything PvP, 1v1, if you spell it out PEE, -E, PEE, -E, AVA, Alliance v Alliance, it doesn't matter. They will time you out and ban you for even talking about PvP which is a complete 180 to what this game was portrayed as um is that's not good that's that's a community thing you go on the forums any pvp bug posts are usually buried or even removed from the forums so yes pvp players such as myself i am a diehard pvp fan and content creator that's all i do in this game yes i have done amalgamation of other things i have done quite a bit actually i've done pretty much everything there is to offer in eso again and again and again and again and in this video, I'm going to kind of explain some of the systems that have completely robbed the enjoyment from me and many others from the Elder Scrolls Online. First off, you guys may know, the, the infamous horse armor in Oblivion was the first microtransaction. I mean, there, there's a Maple story when you're next on whatever, but the infamous horse armor in Oblivion was the first microtransaction for $5. You got some cosmetics for your horse. All right. So... Keep that in mind. This was the very first, you know, franchise whatever to have these microtransactions available in their game. ESO right now is the biggest cash grab of any, uh, even more so than gotcha games, in my opinion, than, than any game really on the market. And that's a bold claim, I know, and I'm going to get a lot of heat for that in the comments. But the amount of, ooh, how do I say, pay for convenience in this game is astronomical. The game over the years, The Elder Scrolls Online, has been designed in a inconvenient way just so, you know, you pay to bypass some things. For example, ESO Plus, you now get a craft bag and double the inventory space in your bank. Without that, you cannot play the game. Yes, you can play it, it is technically free to play, but you cannot efficiently or enjoyably play the game without this extra inventory space. Rich Lambert, even when questioned about this on stream, laughed 
and said, yeah, <laughs> that is, you know, one of the pluses of ESO Plus, and that's why we'll, they will never sell you the craft bag itself, because without the craft bag, you are screwed in this game. If you plan on spending any time at all, any of your immersive years, you know, I know a lot of us are middle-aged men we got families you know we can toss three you know four hours you know day week you know whatever your circumstance if you want to invest your time in this game it is impossible to play without eso plus um being fun anyways now getting players to come back to this game um let me give you guys an example this was a huge issue about a year ago about increasing the fan base of bringing um, cypher pk back to stream the game to increase its awareness and popularity also bringing back beware aka lulu lovely to come back and play eso in hopes of driving players back to the elder scrolls online now that is good. That is the greatest move that Zoss could possibly done because the success of your video game, especially nowadays, is directly derived on its popularity and how people, the public, perceive your game. If it is a good game, people will buy your game. They will buy cosmetics. They will play your game. If it is not a good game, they won't. So, with that being said, that was made to drive popularity back to Elder Scrolls Online. What ended up happening was Zoss generated the most revenue that they have ever generated in this game ever in the following months. Why is that? The crown store that is um, shoved in your face, logging into the game. Yes, as soon as you log into the game, it pops up the crown store in a typical gotcha fashion. A lot of the intro quests that you have to do, event quests, require you to enter the crown store, therefore familiarizing yourself with the crown store just so you will be there and be present and it will be in your subconscious mind to check out the crown store, okay? That is there all the time, it never ceases. Even in some load screens I've noticed that I'll go from one load screen to another and as soon as I get to that load screen the crown store just pops up in my face again. Now. If you use add-ons, for example, some add-ons, when you go to acknowledge the add-on, if there's a failure or whatever, it actually, the a little dialog box, it actually bypasses the dialog box, and if you hit A on the controller, it actually accesses the crown store, and you're actually going through the menus about to purchase items with your crowns in-game if you're not careful. If you're just spamming a button to clear the dialog box, it actually navigates itself through the crown store, and you can accidentally buy items. That way, it's happened to me twice. I've been furious about it. I submitted two tickets, they refunded it, but the fact that that is a possibility is absurd. Now, getting a little off track. The drive of new players in this game was great. Um, the preying on new players with this crown store and microtransactions. Again, I know you guys do not have to buy anything, right? It's free to play, technically. But new players don't know any better. And there are no prompts and there are no indications to tell new players that some of the services available in the Elder Scrolls Online, actually most of them, you can actually get in-game for free. For example, there is a cure for vampirism. That is $15, you know, roughly you know, 1,500 crowns. $15 for a cure of vampirism. To new players, they're not going to know any better. You get afflicted with vampirism, you know, 15 you know, that's, that's big. But did you know in the game, you can get it for free in like 50 different places in the game. It takes 30 seconds. That's $15 worth, right? Rich Lambert has even went on the record and said, hey, you know, not a lot of people can farm gold in the Elder Scrolls Online. So, you know, that's why they swipe their card for these microtransactions and services available in the crown store. Um, that is an absolute bullshit story, uh, first of all, and most of the services that the crown store has for a crown value you can get in the game for next to nothing or free, you just gotta do a little bit of research, and, but the game tells you nothing about that, you go find that on your own, or sift through the amalgamation videos from content creators like myself, because Zoss doesn't have literally any of that, and it is pathetic. The crown store in general and the services that aren't provided. So there is Gamba in this game. Um, there is a clever little workaround called the Seals of Endeavor system. So there are loot boxes. Um, Zoss has found a you know legal loophole to circumvent the whole gambling aspect of the game and implement what's called Seals of Endeavor. Seals of Endeavor is a way to earn what items are in the crown crates so you can actually earn them in game. So it's not technically gambling if you can earn everything in the crown crates in the game in some other way. Now, the Seals of Endeavors, uh, let me kind of put this into perspective for you. You do not have to know what it is or all the inner workings. The TLDR is that you earn Seals of Endeavor and it is a snail's pace compared to buying crowns, you know, to get the crown crates. And what I mean by this, for example, it will take you eight months 
if you do every seals of endeavor which is like a daily quest and we can quest um it will take you eight months approximately to get one of these radiant apex mounts which is why you buy these crown crates to begin with you get these a very very slim chance of getting these radiant apex mounts it's like less than two percent and you pay forty dollars for 15 crates um people usually get it on uh probably like the 200th crate on average you know 200 times 40 um that's a lot of gold now a lot of money actually <laughs> In order to get that mount, it would take you eight months to do Seals of Endeavor equivalent of getting that in Crown Grade when you can just swipe and get it, you know, eventually anyway. So the thing about that is that the Crown Crates are seasonal. So the mount that you want, that you save up all your Seals of Endeavor for, which is going to take you over a half a year to do, if you log on each and every single day to get that mount, that mount has already been gone and it's been gone for like half a year there's no way you're getting that so what's the point Zoss like what that is I'm not gonna go off on a tangent about that it is very speculative it is very evil behavior um to be honest it is very uh, predatory and uh, I don't really agree with it um it didn't used to be like that this video was about what ESO is like now, what it is like to play the Elder Scrolls online now. If you don't care about microtransactions, none of this is going to matter to you. But what will matter to you is what I'm going to say next is the community um, has pretty much been abandoned. What do I mean by that? They're still producing content, right? There's still new DLC zones. There's still a new class that came out. It's been five years since we've had a new class and never have we had a new weapon skill line, which makes everything very mundane and very, you know, distasteful. All of the revenue, everything would be okay. Crown Sword, sure. I can somehow justify that and play the mental gymnastics in my head if all of that revenue was pumped back into the Elder Scrolls Online. Guys, it took us seven years to get new hardware for servers. The server performance is abysmal. It's getting worse and worse. They have degraded the population cap in the open world environment by like 75% just because the servers can't keep up with, with anything. And some fictitious world, so some alternate reality, okay? If I could somehow justify the crown story in my head, like, okay, they need to make money. They need to keep food on the table. They need to keep Microsoft happy. They need to make money. They need to keep pumping money. They need to keep reinvesting into their product. Yes, they'll upgrade their servers. They're, they're going to you know, hire new people, hire new engineers, fix all these bugs that have been in the game. The, the stupid in-combat bug has been in the game since inception. You still fall through the map. There are so many things that just don't work. But thank God all that is being taken care of with the extra revenue that Zoss is gaining from the crown store. That's where you'd be wrong. Um, the Elder Scrolls Online has made more money than any of Bethesda Zenimax's games ever last year. All the games combined. Like, they have made like 10 times the amount of all the games combined. The Elder Scrolls Online is literally a cash cow for the company. And none of that money gets it reinvested back into the Elder Scrolls Online. None of it. They do not care about the community. All of it is getting forwarded to go you know, Todd Howard, Elder Scrolls 6, which will come out in like five years, and also Starfield, which is a single player game, right? It is going to be a flop. Who is going to play a single player game for any long amount of times? But all that money is being pump pumped into other endeavors elsewhere within the companies. I guess they can do whatever they want with it. But guys, as a community, they do not care about the player. They, they just care about this. If you want my humble opinion, I don't think it's necessarily the, the, the corporate greed, you know, kind of up the ladder. I personally would like to take a Loki take on this from the Time Transit Authority and just prune the devs. Even during the community streams is ridiculous because the community managers are shilling out their merch and product placement the entire time. They completely refuse to answer relevant questions when it comes to bug fixes and PvP anything content in this game is abysmal and it's just the amount of money that they actually make and do not reinvest into the Elder scrolls online really rubs me the wrong way and it has for a while and me as a content creator i have contributed to that problem because me you know i used to play 
video games as an escapism from real life. And I, I and now it's kind of gotten to the point to where the Elder Scrolls Online, I, I dread making content for it because I know what's really going on behind the scenes, right? Um, let's 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 kind of revisit the crown sword before I, I, I touch on that topic. Um, there is a debacle about the crown sword right now, how you're not able to gift said crown crates. So people have cleverly figured out a way to a geotag and change the location to buy crown crates at a super reduced rate, like five dollars for fifteen. I said it was forty dollars for fifteen crates earlier. There's a way you can geotag and go to other countries and technically buy them for five dollars because of some third world laws, you know, you know, uh, rate of inflation, you know, whatever. And a lot of people are doing that, selling crown crates, and it's kind of circumventing the whole crown crate gifting system. And Zoss is losing a lot of money doing that, so they don't really intervene in the game unless it's losing money. Let me tell you, that crown store, the crown system is immaculate compared to the rest of the game. If anything goes wrong, the crown store is fixed immediately. But but anyway, that's that's something that they won't touch on in the forums. They they I don't know why they won't. They won't give us the details. But that's what's going on. Uh, just so you guys know. But uh, let's 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 kind of get back on track here. So let, let's talk about uh, my influence on the Elder Scrolls Online and being um, one of the the you know God rest my soul and God help me, dude. Like being a PvP content creator in the Elder Scrolls Online is tough, dude. It is miserable. But I enjoy PvP and I love teaching people about PvP. I'm a pretty good mentor. I mean, I always put out some of the best builds you'll ever find. Yeah, so if you talk to the PvP people, you probably heard my name somewhere. Good or bad, doesn't matter. You probably heard my name somewhere. But uh, and the reason I'm even bringing this up is that uh, I am kind of playing into the problem and not the solution um, by producing content for the Elder Scrolls Online. I'm drawing more people in. I am keeping people here who would otherwise leave, you know, go on to bigger and better things. And I feel like my involvement is just contributing to the problem. Um, that's why kind of going forward, this is going to be kind of uh, kind of for my channel. When it comes to content, I'm going to kind of wean myself off of Elder Scrolls content because I feel that I, I, I just don't feel comfortable anymore um, hyping this game up and drawing people in when clearly the developers are not not uh, not worthy. The, the, the game's vision is so uh, disjointed from what it should be. I don't believe that the community devs or managers are passionate about the Elder Scrolls Online. I just think this is a check mark on their resume so when they move on to other endeavors they can you know have that on the resume i think that's really all it is and i don't feel the devs are that passionate about their game anymore and f you know for that reason i am going to step back on the content creation for um the elder scrolls online this is kind of like a, a coming out um, video as well if you made it to this part of the video anyway um so let's let's talk about the combat so th th this is what i want to talk about the most um, or at least give you my thoughts on it. Uh, when it comes to PvE, the PvE is pretty cool. Um, written a lot of snafus. Scripting is really bad in PvE. It is super bad. If you guys don't know about the scripting issues and the, the, the perfect auto attacks and DSA scripts, you're living under a rock. I mean, most, you know, top tier guilds are doing it. Probably 60-70% of people have some script of some kind, some sort of macro. It, it is a degenerate behavior. And a lot of that has trickled over into PvP. There's a lot of scripting. That, there, there is a lot of cheating going on in the Elder Scrolls Online. I don't agree with a lot of other content creators sometimes, but uh, JTK uh, Gaming did make a really good video about cheating in the Elder Scrolls Online. I think he could elaborate on that quite a bit more. And there's a lot of cheating. Like, this isn't an eSport, guys. I don't understand why people are. You know, I don't know if it's just like an ego boost or whatever it is. Like, this isn't eSport. There's no monetary value to be earned. I don't know why so many people are, are doing this. And it's running rampant. It's so easy to, to get access to these macros and private discords. It, it, it's just unfathomable how how degenerate the, the game has became over the years. But let's talk about the PvP combat. It's had a problem since day one. Uh, the devs do not know how to balance PvP because they're so dissociated with the PvP community. I have made multiple attempts, the real Godzilla, to reach out to the community managers to help bridge the gap between the PvP community and the rest of the community. I feel like we're segregated in a little bubble, like in an island, like a little gas chamber just waiting to be turned on. That's the way I feel. Like if anyone's gonna feel abandoned, it's us PvPers. We are the, the, the sh shit stains of the of the community. We're all viewed as like degenerate you know, ape, apes, Neanderthals, and we're not like that. We're just frustrated that 
this was supposed to be a PvP game. And there's very few veterans around, and we, we don't get any love. Zero. Zero. When I say zero, I mean zero. There's never been a new weapon line. We only have seven classes in the game after nine years. It would be okay if the classes were, were, were well devised and balanced, and they're really not. They're working on the balancing. So let's talk about the balancing. The Elder Scrolls Online does not balance PvE and PvP independently. You cannot ever, ever, in game design, have a balanced game in both PvE and PvP without segregating the two. Most of the nerfs and changes are made in PvE and all that trickles over to PvP and we're just kind of left with the scraps. Very rarely do we ever get a balance change specifically for PvP. And usually when we do, it affects PvE and people cry about it and gets reverted. Uh, no offense to you guys, but uh, that's usually what happens. We get the short end of the stick on that one. Um, the hybridization, um, Zasa's idea of hybridization of making um, the, the skills hybridized, uh, meaning if you're unfamiliar with the Elder Scrolls Online, you typically have two resource pools. You have Magicka and you have Stamina. And depending on your ability, it would either cost one or the other. So uh, the idea was to like kind of combine those a little bit. You know, weapon and spell damage, um, same thing as your stat pools, magic, Stamina, you know, whatever. The idea was to combine those to where people would have more build variability and uh, it would, you know, make it more exciting um that did just the opposite um it actually made the meta way more stale because there's like 300 and something sets in the game don't quote me on that sets are like the equivalent you know you guys know what sets are come on if you play mmos or you know like diablo arpgs you know what a set bonus is right um there's like 300 of them in the game and in pvp there is like eight maybe nine relevant sets and the rest are dog water you can't use them and the game has become like so like grindy and competitive in, in PvP that if you're not running one of these quote unquote meta sets, you put yourself at a super disadvantage. Uh, the game promotes Zerging, it promote, promotes uh, unkillable tank Zerg gameplay. If you guys are again unfamiliar with the ESO, I'm like oh it's a PvP game, of course you're supposed to group and blah 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 have fun. Um, you guys don't understand. So back in the day, you used to be able to like 1v20, 1v10, you know, whatever, pretty easily. I um, mean, PvP has gotten to the point to where the time to kill is so abysmally high, it is just un unenjoyable. Unless you run around in like a huge Zerg, you can't really kill anyone or do anything. And this is coming from one of the best solo players, not to pat myself on the back or anything, but I have had the most hours solo in PvP than any other player in this entire game. I will bet my my channel on that one i assure you that as a solo player i had the most hours in serial than any other players across console and in pc to this day i i rarely group and if i do it's just for like a couple hours okay so this is coming i know what i'm talking about when i say this when the time to kill is abysmal that's my job as a solo 1vx or is to kill people as quick as possible right it has gotten to the point to where the damage has been squished so much and the tank ability and the smart healing system which i'm going to talk about in just a second has made everyone just, just just unkillable just unkillable and so what you have is just this mosh pit of people using spells back and forth and nothing happens like literally nothing happens it, it, it's just a slog fest back and forth and and all of the the hours and, and and grinding for all these new sets that all, all, all this time that you've wasted to, to, to pump into a build and you know a week two weeks later when you have everything golded out all your upgrades ready you hop into pvp and you get zero results because everyone is running around with super high th health thresholds and they don't do any damage and everyone just feels like a tank everyone feels like a hill bot speaking of hill bots the smart healing system ESO needs to be scrapped and redone. The fact that someone can be getting killed from an AOE ability through the floor and the smart heal, if you guys don't know what that is, it prioritizes the uh, most injured target in an area and will heal that person over everyone else. You don't have to look at it. There's no skill. You just you spam a few buttons and, and that's it. And speaking of that, we've not had a new serial map in nine years since this game has came out. Serial has not changed. Yeah, they added a few little outposts in here, but literally nothing has changed. One good thing about PvP, uh, was P was good about PvP, was going into the Imperial City is essentially a new smaller map. And there's actually some incentive to farm down there. There's some match you can, uh, materials you can get and you can trade for gold. And it, um, some of the mats that you get down there are actually using a lot of the in-game you know, uh, potions and enchantments and glyphs and stuff. And that population is gone. It's, no one is in there. No one is in the Imperial City and I can't figure out why. Um, I really can't. It is the lag is amazing there. Like there is no lag. 
you actually have incentive monetary value in game to do you know tasks down the imperial city but everyone chooses to stay up in Cyrodiil in their ball groups and just just run around hill botting and just super high health and no one dies it's not fun um, i've had a lot of people come into eso and they particularly single me out but hey you know you have a lot of inf information about pvp i come to you you know for training tips and stuff and you know i i tell them i'm like it's it's not what it used to be um when i look back um like you know like nine years ago and shut the door to where the game was compared to where it is now it is night and day difference and it is very difficult for me to remain interested in the game for any length of time uh, because of that so um the state of vso it's not good it's not good when the new class came out we've had the new class in uh five years it's been about five years since we had a new class um twitch hit like an all-time high of like eight thousand concurrent viewers which is nothing right and then two days after the new class came out it went right back to the same exact trend that it always was with concurrent viewers you know two maybe three thousand concurrent viewers at any given time um the fact that you can have that substantial amount of drop off in two days after a brand new class had been released kind of tells you a lot about the state of the game and would it be a game that i would recommend investing your time in does this game reward you for your time invested and the answer is absolutely not it is um, a, a very pay for convenience system. It's also a very pay for power system. There are what's called mythical items in the game and they are items that are substantially better than any other gear in the entire game. And the only way you can get them is by buying the expansions. When you're playing ESO Plus, everything's free to play. You don't have to buy the expansions. The expansions are not included in ESO Plus. You have to buy them, it's like 40 bucks. So, in order to get these mythical items, you have to buy the expansion. And if you do not have these mythical items, you are at an extreme disadvantage. So, in a way, this game is pay to win. So, it's pay for convenience, pay to win. The community is completely divided between PvE and PvP. The community managers are completely disjointed from the community and what we want. They do what they are told or what you know, is going to generate the most revenue for them and they don't really listen to the community at all. Um, there's not been any radical changes that has helped the quality of life of anyone. Like literally in ESO, I mean, there, there's been like a handful of forum posts that I've seen that, that they've worked on some quality of life things, but everything is, is is just for show like it takes them forever to get anything done i don't know understand why i'm not sure what kind of spaghetti code is going on behind the scenes but we don't have roadmaps for anything guys like they're they're again you're banned for talking about pvp on the streams we don't have an open line of communication with the community devs from the pvp community and it's that's just how it is and it's not getting any better it's gotten worse and worse and worse over the years and i had this sunk cost fallacy i've dedicated nine years of my life for the elder scrolls online produced comment for the you know content for the past couple of years i was dropped a fair bit of money you know for content creation into this game and it's very hard to pull myself away from it because again you know sunk cost fallacy and i'm starting to realize that so going forward i'm going to be producing less content um, because i don't want to drive players to the elder scrolls online um, you guys don't deserve that um, by all means if you are a content creator for the other scrolls online more power to you if you love this game you're super passionate about it absolutely do what makes you happy man but i'm telling you right now putting all my time and effort into promoting a company and a game that just simply doesn't deserve it anymore is very distasteful and i uh it, it, it hurts me on a uh, it hurts me on an ethereal level okay um it's uh it, it does kind of eat at me you know people ask me for builds videos you know i but it it pains me to make videos sometimes just because i know i'm just contributing to the problem and not the solution the solution is to again prune the 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 dev team essentially and put in people who are actually passionate about the game and care about the game's longevity um that is since gone it's been like that for years and that is the state of the elder scrolls online in its current state is not a game you should invest your time in or your money for that matter yeah you can kind of chill with the homies you know free to play stuff if you just want to you know chill in the discord and talk but when it comes to actually um playing the game and it being a very successful fun game to play um it's it's not a game it's it's not it's not a dying game it's a dead game guys and that's it's kind of where eso was at 
yeah, there, there's some silver linings. I won't end on a completely terrible note. The new class was awesome. Um, there's a terrible bug in the game to where the, the tracking on this beam ability can't hit people. But other than that, the class is very well designed. The lore around it was awesome. The new Apocrypha area was pretty freaking cool. And the auditory to it is very nice. It's a very flashy class. Is it meant for a solo player? No, but I know the game isn't revolved around me, right? It's revolved around, you know, the community as a whole. Um, a huge W, a huge rare W for Zoss in that matter. But the fact of the matter is, um, you, you can't, you can't dip a turd in some icing and sprinkles and, and call it anything different than a turd. A turd's still a turd. Okay, that's, that's what this game is. Like, you, you, you can't, <laughs> you guys get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's disgusting but that's uh you can't make a pig look like a how does it saying go make a pig look like a flower or something i don't, I don't know I, I might cut this out in post credits i'm making myself look stupid but but, but anyway um that, that that's kind of where i'm at with the eso um so if you're looking to get into this game again this is like my fourth time repeating myself i i would highly suggest against it there are other games out there for now i'm maining diablo 4 for a while i think diablo 4 is a really great game it's not an MMO, it's an ARPG, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. And we will be producing a lot of content on it, a lot of builds, a lot of PvP. So if you guys are interested in that, just sub to the channel. It'd be awesome. So you're notified when I actually produce that content. But uh, I've been rambling for like the, the past hour or the past half an hour now. And uh, yeah, it uh, really pains me to make this video, but I, I kind of wanted to get this off my chest because it's been weighing on my mind for a very long time now. And I just wanted to give you guys my, my honest opinion on where the Elder Scrolls Online is and where it's headed and it's not headed in a good place. It's already in a bad place and it's not really going to get any better. So um, with all that being said, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who continue to support me for whatever reason. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys very, very much. My do stream on both Twitch, YouTube and also Kick. I try to stream now, so go follow me on all three of them if you guys want to you know, kind of join in on the streams and just kind of chill with me and pick my brain about builds. You know, I'm a nine-year vet. I mean, I can pretty much tell you anything there is to know about this game. So if you have questions, uh, just hit me up in the description of the video. It has everything you need. So that's been my assessment on the state of the Elder Scrolls Online and how pretty much the, the Elder Scrolls Online has been abandoned. So yeah, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.